This first Sunday in Lent, um, you can see we've changed our colors. There's also, um, we have buried the Alleluia's for Lent, which will uh, rise again on Easter. But you'll, you'll notice that we have a, a different tone um, and rhythm to our, to our liturgy this morning and in these coming weeks. Um, just a few announcements. Um, today um, at 11.30, we will be um, continuing with our, um, our adult forum for Lent. And it's following the book, Will You? Looking at the five promises um, of our baptismal covenant. And so that will be 1130 in classroom three. And also we are continuing uh, this Thursday, the Thursday evening Lenten series with Father Jim. Um, and we're currently looking at um, confession and forgiveness. So you're invited to join us at series is on Zoom. Um, also, just a few notes about communion. Um, all are welcome to come forward. This is God's table. If you would like to receive the wine, we just are not in tincting at this time. We are not dipping the bread into the wine at this time. If you would like to receive the wine, we ask that you drink directly from the chalice, or you may reverently touch the base of the chalice. Or if you would like to come up to receive a blessing, you may cross your arms over your chest. Um, and we are also offering healing prayer this morning. So if you would like to come up to receive communion and then continue on um, to receive healing prayer, that is being offered right outside the doors of our sacristy. Um, you'll also hear in our prayers of the people um, we are asking um, for prayers for the repose of the soul of Stanford. And um, Stanford is, is the brother of Howard Mackey. So we please ask you to keep Howard um, and his siblings and Howard and Marcia and, and their family um, in your prayers. Um, and we will have more information um, coming this week about that. Um, but just to please keep um, Howard, Howard, you are in our prayers. So um, let us stand, please, and continue with our opening hymn. <laughs>
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. God's mercy endures forever. Amen. Here are the commandments of God to God's people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. Amen. Lord, have mercy. You shall not make for yourself any idol. Amen. You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain. Amen. Lord have mercy. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Lord have mercy. Honor your parents. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit murder. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not steal. Amen. Lord have mercy. You shall not be a false witness. Amen, Lord have mercy. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen, Lord have mercy. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name amen almighty god have mercy on you forgive you all your sins through our lord jesus christ strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the holy spirit keep you in eternal life amen <laughs> Blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan. Come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as come out the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that I never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all generations, I have set my ball in the clouds and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant and it's between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. 
and the water shall never again come, never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the boughs and the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all the flesh that is on this earth. He with the Spirit saying to the God's people. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be <laughs> Show me your ways, O Lord. And teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation, in you know I trusted all day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love. For they are everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love, and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right. And he way to the Lord. All the paths of the Lord are love and faithfulness. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Please be seated. We began this holy season of Lent last Wednesday with the imposition of ashes on our foreheads and with the reminder, remember that you are dust and to dust you shall return. And with the invitation to a holy Lent, Lent is a time set apart to clear the clutter from our relationships, our relationships with God and with each other, to look at what is really important and life-giving in our lives, in our relationships, and what habits or practices are not and what habits and practices we might just want to let go of. We are called to this reflection and self-examination out of love, this great love of God from whom and by whom we have all been created. And through this great love, we are called to live out God's way of love. 
Really, this is all about love. And for this first Sunday in Lent each year, we hear the story of Jesus's time in the wilderness from either Matthew, Mark, or Luke. And this year, year B, we hear it from Mark, the briefest account of the three. As with the other versions, Jesus is first baptized by John in the Jordan. The spirit descends upon him and God announces that this is my son, the beloved with whom I am well pleased. And then in Mark's version, the spirit does not simply lead Jesus into the wilderness, but immediately drives him out into the wilderness, where we are told he was for 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. In Mark, we are not told any of the details of the temptations. We often talk about wilderness as a place of unknowns, a place stripped of comforts and distractions, a scary place or time where we are definitely out of our element. Well, we are then told in Mark that following this wilderness time, Jesus went to Galilee and began his public ministry, proclaiming the good news of God, saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This time of preparation was integral to moving into that public ministry. And as our book group read a few years ago in the four vision quests of Jesus, the right Reverend Stephen Charleston sees Jesus's time in the wilderness as his first vision quest. There are the basic elements of preparation, community, challenge, and lament recognizing that human beings are in need of help. And it is not a test of how strong and how brave a person can be, but rather how vulnerable they can be. And it's an opportunity to learn more about God and our relationship with God. And a quest is pragmatic, designed to produce transformation. And transformation can mean a grounding into reality, not an escape from reality. And transformation takes time. A quest is not a private esoteric experience but a way for seeding back into the community persons who understand both the spiritual nature of life and their role in it. It is not designed to reveal something hidden, but to alert us to something that is in plain sight. Jesus was tempted by Satan, we are told in Mark, was he tempted to believe that he was not God's beloved? And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited on him, we are told. And angels surround us all the time. Sometimes it takes a real stripping away of our creature comforts to recognize those angels who are there in plain sight. In the early days of my marriage falling apart, I found myself in real wilderness. 
And as they say, the only way out of something is to go through it. Well, wilderness can shake you up enough to actually do things that in your secure, comfortable life, you had always said you would do some day. Well, back then, I decided I was going on a three-day back, backpacking trip up in the Catskills with a small group. It was something I had always said someday I would do. Well, I realized that I had to make that someday now. I had done a lot of hiking, but had never backpacked. And I asked my sister Mary if she would go with me. And always a real trooper, she said, sure. She had never been backpacking either. So we read about what and how we should pack in the backpacks that we borrowed. And when we got up to the site in the Catskills, we got out of the car, put our backpacks on, locked up the car, and started walking to where we were to meet the rest of the group. We got about halfway there, and we stopped, looked at each other. These packs were way too heavy and way too awkward. So we walked back to the car <laughs> and started pulling out things that we had thought would be nice to have with us. But now we realize, now that we were carrying these things, these things weren't really that necessary. And so we unloaded them and we tried again, and we did walk to meet the rest of the group. Well, there were about 10 of us, maybe 12 of us, everyone in jeans or hiking pants. And after an introductory spiel by the leader, we all put our backpacks on and started off. Almost immediately, we started hiking up a steep incline. Of course, this was the Catskills. Uh. Duh. The whole first day was all uphill. We were all pretty quiet. <laughs> and I know I just kept thinking and you're getting the clean version of this. <laughs> what the heck have I done? But of course, it was too late. And we slowly kept going, focusing on our footing. And we had plenty of time to think. And I did a whole lot of praying. I was able to have a lot of God and me conversations. Over the course of those three very challenging but amazing days, I was able to have lots and lots of those God and me chats. And I learned a whole lot about myself. And I know my sister Mary learned a lot about herself too. And in our group conversations, we eventually found out that back in the world, one of the members of our group was a dentist, another was a teacher, one a corporate executive, and we found out little by little about each other. 
But for those three days, we were all just sweaty. <laughs> all just looking about the same. We were all stripped of whatever labels or identities we might have carried back there in the world. For those three days, any temptation to feel less than or better than was stripped away. And though we were surrounded by wild beasts, albeit the ones we encountered most often came in the form of chipmunks, <laughs> my sister Mary and I were also surrounded by the most amazing angels who laughed with us over those three days, helped us pitch our tent each night, and taught us about the wonders of cheese that did not require refrigeration. <laughs> so I know I chose to do this backpacking trip. As I mentioned, my real time of wilderness was the time of not knowing, not knowing how the relationships within my family would change with the death of my marriage, and having to come to grips with the realization that we really do not have total control over everything in our lives. And navigating through that and sorting through all that for me would take a really long time. But I had those three days, those three days of backpacking to remind me that through God's grace, we would get through. To remind me that God was there, one step at a time, up the steep inclines and down through the rocky sections, and that I had folks to show me, show me how to better navigate, show me how to better place my feet for those rock scrambles. And there are always angels all along the way. They might not look just like what we'd expect, or offer what we might think we need, but they do surprise us in good ways. May we walk with courage through any wilderness we may find ourselves in. May we welcome the angels all along the way and may we remember that this journey really is all about love. The great love of God from and by which we have all been created and through which we are all called to God's way of love. Amen. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God.
and one being Father. To him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he came Mary. Amen. For our sake, he was crucified and he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. of Noah. We pray for the whole church, all leaders and clergy, especially Michael, Carly, Joan, Jim, and all the holy people of God. We give special thanks for those celebrating birthdays this week, especially Dick, Christina, Zachary, Jeffrey, Marie, Elizabeth, Kelly, and Grace, and for the anniversary of Pat and Artie. Watch us through and through. We pray for our nation, the leadership of Joe, Kamala, Phil, and Tahisha, and for all the nations of the earth, and for all who govern and judge. Purge us from our sin. We pray for those who hunger, those who thirst, those who cry out for justice, those who live under the threat of terror, and those without a place to lay their head. Make them hear of joy and gladness. We pray for those who are ill, those in pain, under stress, and those who are lonely. We pray especially for those on St. Mark's prayer list and prayer chain. Give them the joy of our saving help. In this season of Lent, we pray that we all might be given the grace and strength to repent and grow closer to you, O God. Create in us clean hearts, O God. We pray for those who have died, especially Stanford, and have entered into the land of eternal light and your abiding peace. We pray also for the hundreds of individuals who lost their lives in our country this past week because of the senseless use of guns, including Tiffany Britt, Aiken, South Carolina, Joseph Quayle, Waterloo, Iowa, Jalen Marie Lindsay, age 16, Mobile, Alabama. Eddie McAllister, Hawthorne, California. Alex Ramirez Garcia, Ellicott City, Maryland. Helen and Kenneth, Kenneth Ari, Walker, Louisiana. Isaiah Johnson, Newton, North Carolina. John Edward Red. Amarillo, Texas. Josie Shane Brown, age seven. Dayton, Tennessee. Emma, age six. Scarlett, age nine. And Ruben S. Alacron, Union, New Jersey. Delion Brown, Jr., Miami, Florida. Derek Taylor, Shreveport, Louisiana. Dominique Lino, Hartford, Connecticut, and Roberto Aguilar, Willis, Texas. Cast them not away from your presence. <laughs> Dear people of God, what else or whom else should we pray for? 
I want to cast peace before us today as if peace were seeds, millions of seeds, being thrown forward by millions of people, thrown into the field of the days to come, falling to earth, rooting peace into our lives. In this way, the spiritual way, anger and violence will be overcome by the focused intention of our hearts Peace will be strengthened for its needs strengthening if it is to withstand the worst that evil can devise. Together, we can cast our shared hope forward like seeds that will one day grow to nourish us all. Today, I will be focusing all of the spiritual energy I have on a single vision, peace for every heart that will embrace it. Greet peace like seeds falling to earth as new life to give hope to the battered world. Amen. Lord Jesus, we proclaim the good news in Galilee, saying that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Grant us strength and wisdom to repent and believe in the good news this day and always. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Peace, 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 peace. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Please be seated.
your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. At your command, all things came to be, the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, we created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, and give our sinners into your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law, and in the fullness of time you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood you reconciled us. By his wounds we are and therefore we praise you, joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And so, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be the body and blood of Jesus Christ, our Lord. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread, said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, gave thanks and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord, God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God of our mothers, God of Sarah, Rebecca, and Rachel, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this Holy Communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. For the Lord, know to us and break in Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor, glory, and worship from generation to generation. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. <coughs>
I send you forth bearing these holy gifts that those to whom you go may share with us in the communion of Christ, body and blood. We are many in one body because we all share one bread, one cup. Amen. Thank you. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.